I am James Swanick, and today we are speaking to detox expert Wendy Myers. We're going to be talking about the EMFs that are lurking in your home, all of the toxins, all of the nastiness that is compromising your health. And Wendy is a detox expert, a functional diagnostic nutritionist. Uh, she is the best selling author of Limitless Energy how to detox toxic metals to end exhaustion and chronic fatigue. And she's just told me that I'm getting a pendant sent to me, one of her <laughs> harmony pendants, which I'm going to ask her a little, about, a little bit about in a second, which is a stress reducer and an EMF protector. Wendy, joining us from Playa del Carmen in Mexico. Lovely to have you here. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Tell me how wearing a pendant can block nasty toxins. Yes. So, you know, I've worked with thousands of clients to help detox them from heavy metals. But one of the, the problems with people that want to detox or they're trying to recover their health or they're chronically ill is they're in a chronic state of stress. And one of the reasons for that is uh, EMF. We have these electromagnetic frequencies or fields that we're constantly being bombarded with in our home, from our computers, from our wireless internet, uh, at work, from cell phone towers, uh, from uh, dirty electricity in our walls. And the sources are only increasing. We've got satellites that are going up every day. We have Elon Musk launched 180 satellites last month. And these are 5G satellites. There's gonna be 100,000 in the next few years going up to blanket the entire planet in these really high frequencies that are non-native and harmful to our bodies. And they cause a range of different symptoms. And something I've been worried about for, for years and you know, have like researched and, and whatnot, um, but I was uh, approached by someone that created this uh, Harmony Pendant. And it's just this neat little device, very simple, pretty piece of jewelry that uh, helps, it protects your body about 50%. It's, there's no, nothing that's 100% protective, um, but it dramatically reduces stress and it helps to block some of the, the EMF that we are experiencing in our environment. So is it reducing the stress because it's blocking 50% of the EMFs or is it reducing stress because of another reason? So how it works is essentially it's uh, optimizing your body's energy field. So talking about some concepts from bioenergetics, we all have an energy field around us. Our heart throws off an energy field, you know, in a 10 foot diameter around us. This is scientifically proven by heart math and, you know, other uh, researchers. And so all, all of our body puts off this energy field and that's where the majority of our communication takes place. So our body communicates physically with nerve impulses and neurotransmitters and hormones, but the majority of our communication, like the brain sending messages to the heart or the heart sending messages to other organs happens in this energy field. And so when you have something like these non-native frequencies, these EMFs, these high frequency EMFs, bombarding us, that's going to dramatically interfere in our body's ability to communicate. It interferes in our heartbeat. It interferes in our brain waves. And so that affects our sleep. We get heart palpitations. We get, um, you know, fatigue, brain fog. Uh, research is even showing infertility, um, you know, tumors. I mean, there's so many different consequences, health consequences of this, this EMF affecting our energy field. So what the pendant is doing is it helps to, uh, when you're, you turn it on, you, you know, put the pendant on, you activate it. There's a little two minute process you do to activate it to your body's energy field. It's optimizing your energy field. It's clearing it of energetic blockages and your body starts regulating better. It starts working more efficiently and in doing so reduces stress on the body. And so we see that evidenced in HRV, it's a, a measure of stress, it's called heart rate variability. And we did a study with about 101 patients conducted by eight different doctors, a few of them medical doctors. And we saw, uh, you know, the study design was doing a baseline HRV test, uh, exposing the patient to an, a high EMF source. And then we saw all the numbers dramatically decline 
and other variable HRV and other variables. There are about 30 different variables tested. And then we uh, put a harmony pendant on, activated it, tested five minutes later, and then we saw all these variables improve, many of them over and above the baseline. And so we're, we're just showing that the pendant <clears throat> is, it, you know, reducing stress. And it's it's not the pendant's not blocking EMF, so to speak. It's just optimizing your energy field so that when you are exposed to EMFs, your energy field is better able to kind of um, defend itself. It's not going to um, it's not going to like be as subject to it or as prone to um, to not working as optimally. Yeah, it's not an impregnable uh, suit. It's kind of like yeah, exactly. It's not like it's not like Clark Kent going into a uh, telephone booth and coming out as Superman all of a sudden being able to fight off bullets, but it, 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 he is able to maybe get in a few fights and and win without. Is that a, is that a, a, a good analogy? Do you think? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because there's nothing out there that's a hundred percent protection. I mean, there, yeah. there's some very very expensive home devices. I like the Blue Shield device. That's fantastic. Uh, the the key device is fantastic, also. But those are you know thousands of dollars. And I think the Blue Shield one is like for the low end model is like six hundred dollars. But the pendant is great because it it goes with you everywhere you go. Where a lot of people will you know work to optimize their home and, you know, defend against EMF in their home with earthing sheets, or some people have, um, you know, bed canopies, or you can have, you know, paint, graphite paints to protect from EMF. There's a lot of, there's a lot of things you can do in the home devices that I talked about that can protect your entire home. But what happens when you leave your home? What happens when you go to your friend's house or you go to work, or go to the store, the Harmony Pendant goes with you everywhere. And it's, you know, like I said, it's not hundred percent protection, but it's 50%. And, and I'll take that. I think right now we need every, all the help that we can get because the, these EMS people have to pay attention to them because they are causing low grade chronic symptoms uh, like anxiety, depression, insomnia, uh, poor energy function. People have uh, higher glucose levels in their blood as a result of this. Um, there's a, a lot of different uh, problems that these EMFs are causing. People have to pay attention to this because if you present with these symptoms at your doctors, they're not looking at EMF, they're not looking at heavy metals, they're not looking at these toxins that are these uh, growing underlying root causes of these symptoms. So, if you and many others in our community are so knowledgeable about the dangers of EMFs and we look at Elon Musk sending satellites up into the um, up into space as being another dangerous way of getting EMFs why is it still looked upon with so much skepticism and why isn't the medical community or government or policymakers preventing all of this, like if it's so obvious that the EMFs cause us compromised health, why it seems like the opposite of that, which is to accelerate EMFs, why is that okay? Like, why is that approved? Why is that encouraged? Well, you know, it's all about money. You know, it's, you know, people, these, you know, who are the players that are rolling this out? Bill Gates, Jeff Bezos of Amazon, and Elon Musk, uh, the billionaires, the globalists, if you will. And so whoever owns the skies and is going to own all this data and make a, a tremendous amount of money from it. And so, you know, they're lobbying governments, they're paying people off and whatnot. Um, but certain countries in Europe, uh, like in Denmark and Switzerland, they've stopped the rollout of 5G. Uh, pending further uh, research. Um, this, so there's a, a few, a handful of countries in Europe that have opted to protect their citizens. Um, but unfortunately, in the majority of the world, this is rolling out and um, it's really just a, a matter of money. The research is out there. Uh, there are uh, tons of amazing books from Nick Panol, from Lloyd Burrell, from Dr. Mercola, that have all the research that shows the, the harm and the health impacts that EMF cause. So, um, but we all know how that goes, you know, that 
you know, it's only decades later when there's a public outcry that certain harmful products or, or things like EMF, uh, where that's really going to become, you know, it reaches the masses and there's an outcry and laws created to protect people. But the, the evidence is clear that it harms bees, it harms birds, and it harms humans as well. Hmm. Yeah. It, it seems like every new kind of technological advancement that is um, heralded is just like, isn't this amazing? This is fantastic. And look at this super duper Wi-Fi and, and 5G. Isn't this incredible? You'll be able to, you know, 10 times your processing speed and everyone's like, oh, great, great, great. But there doesn't seem to be any health warnings. Um, it's interesting what you said about Denmark and what was the other co country? That, that Switzerland. Denmark and Switzerland. So they have paused their 5G rollout. Is that right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in uh, Australia at the moment and I'm seeing um, all these advertising from the local mobile phone carriers here from Optus and Telstra um, promoting and heralding the arrival of 5G, 5G, 5G. And it's all, all of the marketing is all wonderful and incredible. And certainly what it can do does sound wonderful and, and incredible. Is it, um, what, what do you say to, to the opposite side, which says this is just conspiracy theory nonsense? Uh, and, you know, this is just ridiculous. It's ridiculous. What are you talking about? 5G's causes cancer. Are you crazy? What, 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 how do you respond to that kind of pushback? Well, I think there's a lot of junk science that is funded by the people who benefit from the rollout of 5G. Um, I think there's, there's always bad science that's out there that says it's not harmful and studies done on numerous people. And there's also the blackout by the mainstream media who are to a certain degree owned by people that uh, would benefit from 5G. Like you just, you don't see anything negative in say the New York Times about 5G. And there's there's a reason for that, that they get paid. I, I have a friend that uh, owned a PR company that kept certain stories or certain people, they paid to keep them out of the, the newspapers. Um, lots of companies like that exist. Um, but uh, un unfortunately there's, lots of research that shows that, I mean, just thousands, there's thousands of research studies that show that EMFs are harmful to us on many, many different levels. I mean, and the, the most obvious ones are insomnia, heart palpitations, anxiety, and depression. And we're seeing an increase of these, uh, we've seen an increase over the last few years. And it's very, very concerning. I, mean, I think there's a, an epidemic of, uh, of insomnia and sleep issues directly related to EMF, an increase in anxiety. And people just, they, they just don't understand how their body works. They do many, I mean, I'm trying to educate people on the concept of bioenergetics. People have an energy field. And this is where the majority of your communication takes place. This needs to be protected and it needs to be uh, thought about when you're addressing your health. It's not enough these days just to eat a healthy diet and eat supplements and, and exercise. You have to be thinking about your energy field, how your body communicates and how you can protect that and, and optimize it as best you can. The harmony pendant is one way. It's not the only thing. It's not going to just solve all your problems just with this, but, um, but what I've gotten from some of the practitioners that use this is and how I use it with clients is it's a great way to get people out of this stress state. Like so many people are in this sympathetic dominant, like chronically stressed state and they can't rest well in that state. They can't detox in that state. They can't digest and absorb their nutrients in that state. And they certainly can't heal and recover from chronic illness in that state. And, and this is a very simple way to kind of bring people down into a parasympathetic nervous system state so they can be in, in it and the stays are permanently like I have lots of practitioners that take their HRV or, you know, they're using an aura ring or some other way that they're measuring their stats and check their HRV, check their deep sleep and check other measurements that they're following uh, before and after using the Harmony Pen and they're, they're shot how much their HRV improves uh, that there's because their stress levels are coming down. 
and, and it maintains that it's not just temporary. Like say you go to a yoga class or you go swimming at the beach. Um, those can definitely temporarily improve your, your stress state. But many times people go back to uh, their, their chronic state of stress afterwards, the, you know, their HRV, you know, uh, you know, it's decreases or what have you. So you have to keep doing those things over and over and over. Um, but with the Harmony Pen, it's just a very easy thing that people can wear to maintain like a lowered stress state. I'm curious, um, you mentioned the aura ring, which I have, yes. have here. Um, one of the things I find ironic about it is that in order for me to track my data of sleep, I have to leave my phone on during the night in order for the Bluetooth to connect and actually track the data. Now I do, I do put my phone in another room. I don't put it in my, in the room that I sleep in, but before I got the aura ring, I just switched my phone off. I put it on airplane mode. So it wasn't connecting to the Wi-Fi signal. So how did, how does someone like me like navigate that? How do I reconcile? It's like, Oh, I want to get all this data, but in order to get all this data on my human body, I have to actually expose myself to, to Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. Yeah. I don't know. I think the aura ring, I think that they have a, like some of the newer models that are out, but they have a setting where it's, um, like you can turn off the, the Bluetooth or the data, but then when you wake up and turn your phone on, it populates. Mm. I, I think I'm not hundred percent sure, but there's always a trade-off. I mean, I think we live in a, a very connected wired world that's only going to increase. And, you know, and that's something like for me and you, you know, we work online, I'm, you know, tethered to my computer all day long. It's something that many of us, we, we can't get away from. We just have to find ways to mitigate the exposure to EMFs or Bluetooth and what have you. And so like the pendant is one way to do that. I have a, a blue shield, the blue shield cube that also works in like three different ways to protect from EMF. Um, you know, I have a number of other things that, that I use as well. I have some Aries tech devices I put on my computer and in my phone and whatnot. So, you know, I try to do everything I can to, to mitigate EMF, but it's, you know, for some people there, it's a trade-off. Like for me, I love the data from my aura ring. And so that's just a trade-off I make, uh, to get that data and, and track of what I'm doing is working for my health or not. And you can certainly track uh, with, with the aura ring, the, the benefits of the harmony pendant as well. You have a number, number of practitioners that do that too. Uh, so just walk us through what you do morning, noon, and night to limit your EMF exposure. Like what's the day in the life of, of Wendy Myers here in terms of blocking as much of that, uh, those EMFs in your home? Yes. So I do a number of things. <laughs> So uh, number one, you know, um, I, uh, I do some grounding in the morning. I usually am like sitting in my yard. I'm doing a little bit of meditation and, or I'm going swimming in the ocean. I live about five minutes from the ocean. So that's very grounding because what EMF does is it has a, uh, like your body has a negative charge. It's supposed to have a negative charge, but EMF elicits this positive charge on our body. So that's why it's not, it doesn't work correctly when we're exposed to high levels and chronically low levels of EMF. And so, so grounding out in nature is very important to counteract that. I don't think it's enough these days because you can't spend all your time grounding and we're constantly exposed to EMF. So you have to like kick it up a notch. You have to do a few other things, um, but every little bit helps. And so then I put my harmony pendant on. Um, I also, I drink this water, it's called Wata. It's a negatively charged water. It's got lots of negative ions in it and oxygen and hydrogen. And so uh, one thing that EMF does is it, it lowers your ability to, to carry oxygen in your blood. And it also makes your cell membranes more porous so that pathogens and other things can enter the cells easier. And so the Wata just helps to uh, you know, increase oxygen, increase hydrogen, improve cell function, improve cell membrane function, and kind of help ground your body. This is not feasible. It's for most people, it's just in the, in the US available, unless you order like a pallet. Um, but this is a, one of my little secret weapons in that way to protect from EMF. 
Um, I also, I say certain commands in the morning um, to protect my body from EMF. Um, there's, uh, I mean, I believe that all the words that we say and the thoughts that we think have a dramatic effect on our body. Um, it's just the, everything's in the matrix. That's kind of quantum, quantum physics. So your thoughts and your words and things that you're, you command your body to do are incredibly powerful. So I have some things I, I say in the morning to, uh, to help to optimize my body's functioning and protect from EMF. Um, I also, uh, I have some earthing sheets that I got on like earthing, uh, I think it's earthing.net, Dr. Steven Sinatra's website. So earthing sheets are great, They're kind of like grounding sheets and they have silver and copper threads in them to protect from EMF while you're sleeping. Cause that's the most important to, is to protect you where you're sleeping. Um, because, you know, like I mentioned, the EMFs can really affect your brain waves and dramatically affect your quality of sleep. And if you're not sleeping, you're going to wake up the next day with high blood sugar, more cravings. Um, you're not going to be able to regenerate. Uh, you can't de you're detoxing mostly at night. It just has, uh, as you know, dramatic, you know, deleterious health effects if you're not sleeping. Um, so that's kind of what I do. I also, um, I don't have any electronics in my room at all. Uh, my computer and my cell phone are in another room charging. Um, I don't have, a, like I said, I don't have a television in my room. I don't have any electronics that can be, have like a, like a, a little Bluetooth signal that can be, you know, sent to me. I also take my bed and I have it six inches off the wall because a lot of people have, at least in the United States, the circuit breakers are always on, where in Europe, they turn the circuit breakers off. Like you have to usually press like a, a light switch to turn on the electric breaker. But in the United States where I am, uh, I'm in Mexico now, but it's the same kind of electrical system. You know, you can have dirty electricity coming out of the walls, affecting your head, affecting your brain. And so distance is key. So removing, you know, pulling your bed uh, like at least six inches from the, the wall is really, really important as well. Um, I also do things, I try to keep my cell phone at least an arm's length away from me. Um, so the, the further you are from something, even though it's emitting EMF, the further it is away from you, the better. So it's not gonna be affecting you as much. Um, so those are kind of like little things that I, that I do uh, throughout the day. Also, when I'm using my computer, I try not to, when you plug it in, it's gonna emit a lot more when you're charging it, it's gonna emit a lot more EMF. So I try to use it and as much as I can and then only plug it in as, as I need to. Um, so those are just some little tips um, that might be, might be helpful. <laughs> so don't keep the computer plugged in because it, um, when it's charging, it's emitting more EMFs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You get that yeah. dirty electricity that it's, it's, you know, sending yeah. off. And then, um, got it. And then, uh, do you have a protector on your phone, on your phone, like a, like some kind of. Yes. I have an Aries tech. Uh, that one I really like. I think those are really good ones. It's called Aries Tech, is it? Yeah, Aries Tech. And what is it? Is it? Is it uh, what it's actually? Just a little, it's just a little sticker. Um, it has uh, like frequencies in the sticker that counteract the EMFs. I see. So it has like, it's almost like a hologram. Like it has um, like frequencies in, infused into the, the, the hologram, the sticker. And so it's helping to counteract EMFs in that way. It's just like uh, another form of, bio, like when you say bioenergetics, you're talking about frequencies because everything emits a frequency. Everything in the rocks and the, the sheets and your brain, everything has a frequency which can be measured. And so you can put counteractive frequencies in, in stickers. And that's how a lot of the, the EMF protecting or blocking stickers work. Got it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and then when you are using your computer to do Zoom calls, is it preferable to do Wi-Fi or have it actually connected to a to a modem? So off, yeah. What's preferable? Yeah, I try to be hardwired. So I try to have you know a cord going from my router uh, into my computer, so I'm not having the the Wi-Fi on, and that's ideal. It's not feasible for a lot of homes, especially if they have a lot of different family members. But there are Wi-Fi routers that you can buy that turn off and they're not in use. So they can sense when they're not being used and they just turn off automatically. When they're not in use, turn off at night. Very important to turn your router off uh, at night when you're not using it. 
because it's just going to impact your, your sleep and your brain waves. So, um, but if you, you uh, can't be hardwired all the time, uh, you can at least be hardwired in the room where you're working and or get one of these routers that turns off by themselves. You can also put them on a little, uh, get a little four or five dollar timer and have the router turn off at a certain time every night and turn on in the morning if you don't want to invest in a router that automatically turns off when it's not in use. Got it. Yeah, there's, it seems like there's a lot of things that you can do that people just don't think about. And um, I, I had a guest on the show a while ago who was telling me that um, the shower is actually one of the most toxic places uh, in your home. Um, and one of the reasons was is because the quality of water that we were port putting over our body was was very poor. So if you take a hot shower, it opens up your pores and the water that's now seeping into your pores is not the highest caliber of, of water. And uh, have you, have you heard, heard that before? Or does that oh, make yes. sense? Yeah. I talk about that all the time because my, my main kind of expertise is in uh, detoxification and, and mm -hmm. toxicity. And absolutely. I mean, our skins, our skin can, we can excrete toxins in a, in a hot infrared sauna. We can sweat them out and we can also absorb them uh, very well. Uh, it's, you know, that's why transdermal medications are so effective. A lot of people um, can very easily absorb all kinds of things with their skin. And so in shower water, we have medications. Testosterone is one of the number one toxins in water, birth control pills, uh, we have antidepressants, sleep medication, all the medications that people urinate out in the toilet get are recycled in municipal water sources, and they are not checking for those or not. They're only checking for certain chemicals or heavy metals and, and very few at that. And so all of these, these medications and things that are in the water um, are not checked for and they're recycled back into our water that we're you know, drinking and showering in. And, you know, when you're showering, you have the steam. And so even if there's, it's not going in through your skin, this uh, like vaporized toxins, you can, you breathe those in as well. So you're getting them in two different ways, the toxin intake uh, when you're showering. And then a lot of showers are water, municipal water sources have chlorine in them. They're fluoridated. Um, they, um, they have, um, you know, bacteria, parasites, um, different organisms are, are in the water as well. Not to mention uh, glyphosate, which is an herbicide, very, very, very toxic. Uh, is It makes cell membranes very porous. So one, we have the EMF making cell membranes more porous. And then a second layer is the glyphosate uh, that's used primarily in the United States. I don't think it's so much prevalent in, in Australia, but um, they, the glyphosate makes cell membranes more porous. And that's, I think, I firmly believe those two one, two punches are why so many people are chronically ill because viruses, bacteria, mold more easily get into our cells as a result of these two things, making our cell membranes more porous. And, uh, but yeah, so lots of problems with shower water. <laughs> that's why it's, it's good to get a, a shower filter. There's a great one coming out by pH prescriptions. It filters heavy metals and chemicals. Most shower waters only get chlorine and fluoride. So the derma shower is fantastic in that regard. And it's one of the only ones I know that filters out heavy metals like mercury and lead and other uh, arsenic or other common water contaminants. Um, and a whole house water filter is another option, but that's you know out of reach for most people. Yeah. So is it called pH prescriptions that they're coming out with a, what is it? A shower head? Yeah. It's a shower head that filters metals and chemicals, which I've never seen before. So it's, you know, going to solve a lot of problems. And what, sorry, chemicals yeah. and heavy metals. Oh, and heavy metals. Yes. Got it. Because oh. most shower filters, they're charcoal based. They're not, they're not really getting, uh, they're not really getting fluoride. They're not really getting heavy metals at all. So the, the derma shower is getting, getting rid of a lot of toxins that most shower heads don't. Yeah. Where else? Uh, and then in terms of the soap, 
that we use in our shower in terms of toxins. I would imagine you're going to tell me that most of the soaps on the market are probably not great for us. I use a, a brand called Dr. Bronner's. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, which I understand it is pretty healthy because it's at least when I look at the ingredients, I can understand what it is. There's a lot of coconut oil and beeswax and um, olive oil and things like that. Um, can you just maybe talk to that? Not so much about that particular product, but. I actually know, bought that product yesterday. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. My husband, he likes the peppermint one. Um, but yeah, Dr. Bronner's is great. It's like saponified coconut oil. And so it's a, a super natural um, you know, uh, surfactant to help get rid of dirt. And, you know, a lot of toxic soaps use uh, 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 sodium lauryl sulfate, which is problematic. It's what makes shampoos and soaps like they suds up really with this thick suds and people like that. Um, but it's, it's toxic to our body. It's a hormone disruptor. Also, a lot of the, the typical soaps on the market use perfumes. I, I look at perfumes like secondhand smoke. Uh, perfumes uh, can comprise hundreds of different chemicals. They're hormone and endocrine disruptors. They interfere in our fertility, in our, you know, our menses, our menopause, um, and men's, you know, they're estrogenic. So they interfere in men's ability to have testosterone and have really strong sperm, motile sperm. Um, so unfortunately, a lot of the chemicals in our environment and in our beauty products are estrogenic. So that's not good for men. It's not good for females who, you know, we, we absorb all of these estrogenic substances through our, through our skin, putting these, you know, lotions on our face and our body and, and, you know, sudsing up our body with soaps. And so these, uh, you know, interact with and act like hormones and our hormone receptors. And that signals our body to produce less estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and really wreaks hormone havoc on our body. So uh, I can only implore people to, you know, uh, look at some of the natural alternatives out there. They, they perform and smell just as good as their conventional toxic counterparts. There's lots of options out there today uh, for natural beauty products, makeup, deodorants, every, every class, there are just so many products every day coming on the market that are, are natural and healthy for us. And it, it's worth spending a little bit more money because the, the effects are absolutely cumulative. I mean, we have uh, right now, a, a one in four couples is infertile. Uh, it, it's, it's crazy. And it, it's because of all these estrogenic substances that are acting on our bodies, the pesticides in the food, the perfumes and other estrogenic substances um, in our beauty products, the plastics that all of our food is in, um, it's just really a, a huge, huge problem that, again, I'm trying to wake people, people up to that, that, you know, I think people kind of generally feel like, oh, I, I, I'm really healthy. I eat a really healthy diet. I take supplements and I exercise, but they're not paying attention to some of these little details that can make a huge difference in their quality of life and their brain clarity, their weight, um, their, their happiness, their, their overall health. And so when you start, you know, making these little distinctions and making different choices and working on, you know, detoxing or EMF protection, I think people almost, it's like this fish in water. You don't realize how, how much these things are affecting you until you've mitigated some of these problems and you start feeling so much better when you do that. Mm. I read something somewhere that said the average baby has about 250 toxins uh, in it from the second they're born and that the average person has three times as many toxins as that, about 750 toxins in the body. Does that yeah. sound right to you? Yes, it does. Yeah, the World Health Organization does uh, studies about every five years where they mm. look at toxin levels in adults, in uh, the placentas, in, in children, and yeah, it's a, it's a growing concern. I mean, if you think about it, we have 750 chemicals on average in our body. I mean, they, those are not producing health. They're, they're interfering yeah. in our body's metabolic function every different way in our digestion, in our immunity, in our, our brain function, in our um, you know, ability to control our blood sugar, in heart disease, in our high blood pressure, 
all of these, uh, the chronic illnesses of our time have an underlying root toxin, heavy metals and chemicals as the, the major underlying root causes. I mean, Dr. Joe Pizzorno, who wrote the toxin solution, said that he feels like diabetes, the number one root cause is not diet, it's toxins that affect our pancreas's ability to regulate blood sugar, our liver's ability to aid in regulating blood sugar. And um, it, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's such a huge problem. And I've dedicated, you know, the last 10 years to researching this and publishing what I've, you know, researched on myersdetox.com, um, talking about everything toxins and, and how they affect our body and what you can do about them. Mm. How do we get rid of, I mean, there's one thing to try, to try to prevent ourselves from getting these toxins and exposing ourselves to EMFs, but how do we then get rid of them? Let's just say that we, we go, okay, I'm listening to you, Wendy. I got it. I'm sure I got 750 toxins sitting inside of me. Yeah. Uh, what do I do? Yes. Well, you know, number one, you, you do want to try to mitigate as much influx of toxins as possible but there's only so much that you can control. So, and I, I definitely implore people drink clean water and get a good water filter, um, you, know, uh, you know, eat organic food, take, uh, you know, take supplements and do infrared saunas. Those are fantastic. Um, but, you know, we wanna make good food choices. We wanna buy good beauty products, healthy cleaning products as well. The home is a, a big source of, of toxins. Uh, but even if you do everything perfectly, there are still toxins in the air that we breathe at the office. Um, you know, it, it's just, you go shopping, all the clothes are have formaldehyde on them and perfumes everywhere in the malls emanating out of the stores. I mean, it's just really impossible to avoid. And, uh, you know, there's, there's illegal dumping happening all the time. Um, so it's really kind of impossible to, to avoid all different toxin sources. So in, in that frame of mind, you, you want to be thinking about something you can do on a daily basis to detox your body. And I love infrared saunas. I love ionic foot baths. You know, I, I did three ionic foot baths today myself. They're just, um, kind of have a, a positive and negative ions that pull toxins out of your body and out of, you know, into the water and also a few days uh, after you do a foot bath, you have more excretion of toxins through your, your urine. And um, I also encourage people to do coffee enemas, not as popular and glamorous, but super effective at, you know, eating your liver to, you know, a detox in your body. So uh, a lot of, you know, there's a hundred million people in the U S alone that have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So anyone that has metabolic syndrome, that has uh, diabetes, high cholesterol, heart disease, they have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So uh, coffee enemas are a great way to kind of help uh, get your liver working a little bit better and decongest it and help it detox your body better. Um, there's supplements you can take, lots of different nutrients. Uh, there's toxin binders, there's citrus pectins and charcoals and things that act like sponges that you, you take them, they absorb toxins. It's a, I take something every single day, uh, a, a binder, a toxin binder, uh, not to mention different nutrients, uh, you know, vitamin E, silica, um, you know, turmeric, curcumin, broccoli sprouts, top five detox foods are egg yolks, green, uh, egg yolks, onion, garlic, and um, ginger as well. And uh, I think broccoli sprouts I already mentioned that. So there's, there's top five detox foods there that you should take mm. every day. Um, I, maybe you can tell me whether this is wise or not, but I, I take a, uh, something called bicarb, which is essentially just like baking soda. And I, I, I have a, a product that I have sent to my home and I take it first thing in the morning on an empty stomach uh, and just a warning, it does make you go to the bathroom, uh, quite often in within about 20 minutes, there's about a 15 minute break. And then all of a sudden you got to run to the bathroom. So it's not a particularly pleasant experience, um, going through the process, but then 45 minutes after I've taken it, I feel terrific. Um, is that, 
something like a binder that you might be talking about that's actually flushing out toxins from my from my body? Is it only sodium bicarbonate or is there anything else in it? Um, I'm going to, I think so. Yeah. I think that's all it is, but I'll find, I'll find out. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, sodium bicarbonate is great for, uh, you know, alkalizing your body and it's great if you have like stomach upset or nausea or heartburn, I think it's a fantastic thing to take for those. And yeah, I think a lot of people have their bodies are more on the acidic side and taking something like a bicarbonate can be really, really helpful. My, my husband takes it all the time. Yeah, it's just, it's called safe soda. It's the best way to alkalize. Uh, so, uh, yeah. And if yeah. you take those, you want to take one that's aluminum free. A lot of them have aluminum in them. So mm. you, uh, I advise people, you know, to try to find one that has low aluminum. Mm. All right. Well, this has been very, very enlightening. Thank you. Is there uh, actually, I got, I think I got one more question. So yesterday, uh, in my home, we had, it was a very hot day and uh, our seven-year-old left some food out. Well, actually left some food out a couple of days ago. And yesterday we discovered um, a handful of maggots in our, in our home, which were crawling along the, the floor. Uh, and usually we're pretty, pretty thorough with our cleanliness uh, in our home. But so it was a big shock to us to see these maggots crawling all over the floor. Now, to get rid of them, to kill them, to exterminate them. Uh, we didn't have anything. And I asked my partner, she said, eucalyptus oil. And I got the natural eucalyptus oil and we sprayed that and it didn't seem to kill them right away. And so I also had bought a very toxic insect bug killer from the, um, from the store, which my partner was upset with me with because full of toxins. Having said that, when I sprayed them with the chemical stuff, it did kill the maggots, whereas spraying them with the eucalyptus oil didn't. So I don't know. It's one of these. It's one of these things where I can see how most folks, including myself, kind of want to take the easy option at times. It's just like you know what this. I know this is thing is going to blast them, but then I also know it's probably not good for me to be breathing in the toxins that are coming out of this canister. And if I can just backtrack for a moment, um, with COVID lockdowns, I recall my partner and I, we went to a, a movie theater to watch a, the latest Christopher Nolan film, Tenet, which, which was one of the, the few films that kind of came out right when, when COVID lockdowns had happened. And the cleaners of the theater, the, the movie cinema, had just meticulously sprayed the inside of this movie cinema with all of these toxins, these chemicals, to eliminate the possibility of COVID. However, when we were sitting in the theater watching this film, we were breathing in like all of the toxins that the cleaner had used to eliminate the COVID. So I don't really know what my question is other than I'm just giving you a couple of examples there where the, the, there's kind of like a challenge or there's hypocrisy like, how do we navigate this slightly confusing contradiction? Yes. So on the, the first point, uh, using the, the pesticide, you know, we all pick our poisons, you know, so there has to be a trade-off. So with when it comes to pesticides, you have to use the right one. Like there's lots of essential oils. Some kill spiders, some kill fleas, some kill mosquitoes. So you just have to get the right essential oil that you know decimates the nervous system of the, the insect you're, you're trying to kill. So there are organic pesticide companies out there that will use thyme oil or use different essential oils and very successfully. So I guess the eucalyptus just isn't for flies, you know? <laughs> but we, we all make a trade-off. I mean, lots of women get gel manicures and they, they dye their hair and they eat, they go eat fast food sometimes. I mean, you have to live your life. But on the whole, you wanna to try to make the best choices that you can make. But sometimes it takes too much research and you just gotta get the job done, you know what I'm saying? Um, but it's not the end of the world. As long as you're, you're trying to live like a detox lifestyle on a regular basis, a few slip ups here and there is not a big deal. Um, as far as all the, the toxins and disinfecting that's going on in relation to the pandemic, um, I think the, the fear is unfounded. Um, I personally feel like uh, I've been researching this since December um, before it even came to the United States and uh, was really trying to, you know, inform my, my tribe and, you know, myself also 
about what to do. And the thing is that we live in an environment of, we have hundreds of viruses in our body. We have billions of bacteria and germs and there's bacteria and viruses everywhere. And it's, it's disgusting, <laughs> but that is life. And we learn to live symbiotically with a lot of these different organisms and um, blasting, let's say a movie theater or your home with tons of toxic chemicals is counterproductive. Uh, because one, there's uh, natural ways to do that. You can use essential oils to clean your home like I do. That's uh, very highly antiviral. Um, you can use non-toxic things like Bryotech is a great non-toxic um, hand disinfectant. You can spread it on your face and whatnot. Um, but I, I personally feel that the, um, the hysteria around the, the pandemic is uh, you know, overblown you know, the majority of people are asymptomatic. I've had it, I was completely asymptomatic. My husband had it and it was like a, a bad flu for a little while. And, you know, even people that get the flu have long, can have long-term symptoms and lung damage and, and other things like that. So um, I, I personally feel like it's, I, I'm not into hand sanitizers. I'm not, I just don't, uh, I don't concern myself uh, with those things. And I certainly don't want to go places where they are, you know, blasting all these different disinfectants. I think that our bodies were not designed evolutionary, evolutionary wise to handle all these different chemicals. Our bodies, however, were designed to deal with bacteria and viruses. Our immune systems know how to deal with that. Um, so for me, I'm just more a fan of trying to disinfect as naturally as possible, as non-toxic as possible, and um, I don't live in fear at all whatsoever uh, from, uh, from the pandemic or the virus. I just think that um, a lot of this uh, stuff going on in the world is, uh, has nothing to do with the virus. Um, and it's, uh, I, it's my heart hurts when I see people like super fearful and you know wearing their mask, which the, the research shows don't, don't work and the lockdowns, the research shows uh, don't work. Um, so, uh, for me, I hope, you know, I'm not turning anyone off by, by saying that, but for me, I go by the research. I, I only, you know, uh, my behavior is guided, um, by scientific research and my choices are guided by that. So for me, mm -hmm. you know, I, I think it's very sad, the, the state of the world today. Wendy Myers, founder of Myers Detox Dot com. Go over and check it out at myersdetox.com. That's M-Y-E-R-S detox.com. Author of Limitless Energy, How to Detox Toxic Metals to End Exhaustion and Chronic Fatigue. Where else can uh, our listener or viewers find you, Wendy? Yes. So you can, uh, if you click like the link below this video, you can learn more about the, the Harmony Pendant and try that out. And we give a hundred percent money back guarantee. If you're not happy for any reason at any time, well, we want to give you your money back if it doesn't resonate with you. So uh, you can find me there and learn more about the Harmony Pendant. And like I have uh, hundreds of podcasts and hundreds of free articles on myersdetox.com to, to teach you how to detox your body also. Yeah, the Harmony Pendant, the stress reducer and EMF protector. Wendy, thank you very much. This has been uh, particularly enlightening. So appreciate you and uh, what you do for people's health in the world. Yes, thank you so much for having me.